guys so I'm back in another video and today I want to take a look at Lubuntu for the Pi 4 so if you're not familiar with this and you don't know what this is this is Ubuntu but using LXQT which is another desktop environment it's a pretty lightweight one kind of like LXTE which is using Raspberry Pi OS but I still wanted to test it out and I'm gonna be telling you guys of my experience with this so I've been using it for the past few days and as you might see on my desktop, I've customized it a lot, changed icons, changed themes, installed lots of software. So we're going to be trying to answer one question in this video. Is this operating system better than Raspberry Pi OS? So I'll be showing you my apps that I've installed, performance, and then at the end, we'll try to answer this question and see what my conclusion is. So I, in my opinion, my desktop looks pretty pretty. I've installed the Plank dock right here, as you might, I can go preferences, and I've put it on the left, and I'm using a theme called Preparatil, which I got off the internet, it's a pretty nice theme, makes it look like this, I don't have icon zoom on because that would make the performance worse, and yeah, so that's what my Plank dock looks like, and I've added the little trash docklet right here to make it look better. And then, to go over to my desktop, these are just the default things that come with Ubuntu, which I couldn't delete, it wouldn't let me delete them. We have like our file, home, network, trash, and computer. And you, you might see there's no bar on the top. Well, I just made an auto-hide because sometimes I want to have that big, nice desktop, which is kind of like what happens in macOS. But here, we have our file manager, which I did change it. The default one is PC Man FM, I think. But I installed Nemo which Nemo just looks better, works better, in my opinion. So I changed the default one to Nemo because I enjoyed it more. I installed Chromium, of course, and then we have our app launchers right here. Accessories, we have a lot of accessories here. I installed the Raspberry Pi Imager, of course, to be able to flash my images and everything like that. It works really well on this 64-bit Ubuntu. And then also, we have ARC, which is just some archiving things. We have a terminal. We have So I did install PyApps, which I'll go over in a minute. We have Plank, which I already said, and these are just some other things. So look, I, I did install Etcher, but this is what happens when I try to launch Etcher. It takes a minute, and then it like just it just stays right here, and it never gets to the part where you could actually fa flash the operating system. So that was kind of annoying, but... It's not a huge deal because I already have Raspberry Pi Imager right here, so I'm not so too worried about it. I mean, I was kind of annoyed, but it's fine. And then I did install VS Code, Visual Studio Code, to be able to do my coding and stuff. Education, these are just the default things. Games, I installed a few games. We'll test them out in a minute. Graphics, these things just come pre-installed. I haven't really looked at them internet so what i installed was discord because i use it a lot and chromium web browser i also installed whatsapp web which to do some messaging and stuff youtube buddy i also installed i actually couldn't get youtube buddy to work correctly and if you don't know what that is it's also made by the developer of pi apps and it's like a youtube app he's designed i got it working on raspberry pi os but i was getting some errors on here so i'm not too sure about that one Office, we have the default LibreOffice themes here. Other, I installed Chromium Media Edition, which is Monka's DRM um, Docker image to be able to watch Netflix and stuff. Programming, vi VS Code, sound and video, those just come in here. System Tools, PyKiss. PyKiss, some stuff works, some stuff doesn't. So it's kind of trial error, but I did get some games installed, so that was pretty useful. I installed Wine and Box86 on here. So to do that, I had to add the um, ARM32 packages and stuff, which I can leave a link down below on how to do that. It's not that hard, but yeah. So if we were just to open up our terminal right here, I also changed the color a little bit, and go to NeoFetch. You can see we have the Ubuntu logo. I so if you ask, why did you go to 20.04 instead of 20.10? That's because I get way better performance on 20.04. And because I use 
desktopify on this 20 desktopify does not work on 20.10 and and i don't know the performance just seems so much worse on there here it's so snappy i have everything works wi-fi bluetooth all that stuff from the beginning oh my goodness something just fell well yeah and then my raspberry pi model my kernel how long it's been running for lxqt and i'm using open box and my themes so yeah it's really nice this i've had a great experience with this the last few days i really enjoy using it and to go over to my theming if i went to preferences um lxqt settings and appearance so i'm using the arc dark theme i use this in my raspberry pi os video too that i made a while back ago because i really enjoy it it looks really good icon theme though i'm using something different I'm using the Numic circle. So as you might have noticed, all my icons here are circles. So I saw this on the internet and I wanted to give it a try. And I've actually really enjoyed using it. They look really nice and clean and they cat they look good to the eye. And they work well on LXQT, so I've just had a good experience with them, so I'm sticking to those for now. And cursor, I'm using the Breeze cursor. It's the same as KDE, but this actually comes default on L Lubuntu, so I, did, I didn't have to change it at all. Now to go over some software side. YouTube playback is awesome. Pretty much just like Raspberry Pi OS. Here's my file manager. Discord, I'm using the Electron app by SpacingBat53. And it works pretty much the same as Raspberry Pi OS. I actually might see a little bit more lag. But overall, pretty good. Works nice and fast everything is good here's my server it's all super nice I can scroll through everything have everything going good and yeah it's just a pretty good experience overall and then I install VS code which I can just launch real fast VS code works really well too it's the um, official arm 64 version from Microsoft's website and yeah, it's really nice. And whenever I need that bar, I just go right here and it launches for me. So that's pretty cool too. And Raspberry Pi Imager, Discover. So the default um, software center that comes on here is called Discover. Has a good amount of apps. They're actually all snaps. But yeah, they, they the software center works really well in my opinion. I've installed some stuff from here with no problem. So that's one good plus about this operating system. It works really well. Here I have gparted, terminal, trash. And yeah, so that's about it for there. But we could go over here and test out a few games. So let's just test out Quake because I tested that on my Raspberry Pi video too. And let's just see how it goes. So it's kind of small right here, but single player, new game. Can I make this full screen? Uh... It will not let me make it full screen. That's kind of weird, but I don't, there must be some way. Uh, let's just go right here and save, and let's get started. So, I mean, of course, this isn't a very heavy game. Works super nice. It's pretty lightweight, actually. But yeah, it, I've had a good time playing this on here, just like Raspberry Pi OS. I can chew, I can do everything that I normally would want to do on Raspberry Pi OS. I mean, most stuff. So I'll be talking about that in a minute too, what stuff I can't do. But to go to the game right now, if I just go through this portal, go through here, go through here. Yeah. So that's Quake, basically. If we were to take a look at a different game, we could go with uh, Super Mario 64. I can make it full screen, nice and big. So let's see how this thing goes. So, actually, I can't get my keyboard mapped or my controller mapped correctly on here, so I can't play the game. So, that was a bit odd. It's not a huge bummer. I don't really play this game that much, so, yeah, we can just exit out of there for now. 
but it does work. And games, let's, we can stop doing games for now. And we could go over here and tr I'll show you guys Box86. So I actually learned how to do this from Nova Spirit Tech, so shout out to him. I'll leave his GitHub link down there, which shows you how to install some software in Ubuntu. And he shows you the dependencies and stuff you need to do this. But, I mean, it's fully functional in here. You could also install Steam with here, and it should work correctly. See, Box86, it's installed. And if I went Box86 Wine, we see that Wine is here too. Because I could go right here, Wine, Programs, and I installed 7 zip, but you could install other programs too. So with that um, little hack to make it look like it's 32-bit, but it's actually 64-bit, Box86 and Wine do perform and work perfectly fine. So now to the other part, PyApps, which is the software center, which is in Accessories, PyApps. So this is one problem I had with PyApps. So now to talk about the problems. So PyApps, it looks like it works, it launches fine. And then if I want to install something like Etcher, look, I click install, and then it closes, and then it just opens back. Normally on Raspberry Pi OS, when you do that, it opens up the terminal, and then closes. So that was one problem I had with this. I think because it's not made to work with the Qt terminal yet, which I'm going to be um, telling BotSpot about this problem so maybe he can fix it in the future but if you're asking how did I install the software from here what I did was basically I just installed PyApps and then I went to the PyApps folder which is in here and I went to apps found the app I wanted like Etcher and then all you have to do basically open up a terminal and you just take this install 64 because this is 64 bit and all you do is you basically just drag that in here you hit enter and it installs it for you. So I mean, it's still functional because you still can install the software, you just can't use that um, graphical user interface, which isn't a huge bummer, but I just found this little pass through and it works pretty well. So you, I would recommend just doing this if you do install Ubuntu, Ubuntu, or any distro of Ubuntu on your Pi, just to do this little pass through and you should be good. But in the folder, if there isn't a install 64, if there's only install 32, don't try to install it because it won't work because install 32 is for 32 bit and this system is 64 bit so it would not work so just one little flag right there to remember uh, now we could go over to PyKiss so PyKiss also works really pretty well but there are some things like that menu icon when I try to open it you see nothing happens so I have to open up my file manager Go over here to PyKist, click on PyKist.sh, double click on it, run in terminal. So that's how you have to launch PyKist. I mean, it's understandable because these programs weren't built to run on Ubuntu, they were built um, to run on Raspberry Pi OS. So I can understand a few problems like this. I'm not like mad about it or anything. So the installing for, for the most part does work okay, I mean. You could just click on Kodi and you should be able to install it. Internet. Most of these things should work, but if you try to install Zoom, it might not work because this is 64 bit and that Zoom installer is most likely made to work on a 32 bit system. So you just have to keep these things in mind and be ready for them not to work, basically. Yeah. So those are about all the things that I would really want to see on here that I couldn't get working. I'm trying to think of anything else that I want to say. But, yeah. I mean, I did got Visual Studio. I have Chromium Media. For example, it should launch in a second. I made that desktop icon, or am I not? It just seems that some stuff on here, you try to make the icon, and then you click on it, and it just doesn't launch. I don't know why. But if I wanted to launch it from the terminal, all I'd have to do is sudo chromium-rmhf. And after a little bit, it will launch.
I don't know. It's just a bit slow. But to watch Netflix or whatever, it's usable and it works. So I'm happy with that. If it works, I mean, what, what else can you want? And then here's just the normal Chromium. Looks really nice. I'll, you can go to YouTube. I can do Google searching. It's actually really nice and usable for a desktop computer I keep on seeing how much more the Raspberry Pi is able to be your full-fledged desktop computer for work or whatever it really can do it it is amazing but yeah that's just some web browsing it works better than Firefox in my testings but yeah so this is my Lubuntu desktop I in my opinion it looks really cool any questions about how I did this or if you even want a video tutorial just let me know down below in comments but now, to answer the question, is this operating system better than Raspberry Pi OS? I still have to say no. I mean, Raspberry Pi OS is amazing because most everything is built for it. Because it's built for the Raspberry Pi. So more software, more... Basically, all software is first written for Raspberry Pi OS and works the best. So I definitely, I love Lubuntu. It's amazing. And, but I still Raspberry Pi OS is still my favorite operating system due to more software being available But is this operating system? Um, could you use it every day as a daily operating system? Yes, you could definitely it is totally capable of doing that and I have done it for the last few days And I've enjoyed it. So I'm actually gonna be like switching between these two f for the most part but yeah, so any questions about this test, any questions, just let me know down below in the comments. And yeah, please hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe.